This is the just announced Huawei Nova 9. This is the just announced Honor 50. There's a good chance that you haven't heard of either of these phones, but there's something really strange happening here that we need to talk about. So here's the Honor 50. It's a 529 euro mid-ranger, and to be honest, it's off to a really strong start. You have the phone on top, a clear squidgy TPU case, USB-C cable, a pair of earphones, and a 66 watt fast charger. What is that finish? And here's the Huawei. Wait a second, are these, are these the same box? Okay, well, the phone's on top, and underneath there is an insert which contains a clear case, a 66 watt charger, and would you believe it, a USB-C cable. Wow. Very curious. But before we can even talk about these phones, we need to quickly understand the unusual relationship between Huawei and Honor. So you might know this already, Honor was actually created by Huawei in 2013. Then for this entire time, it's been sitting underneath them as a sub-brand. While the main company was focused on high-ranking professionals and business people and those who would shop by going into physical stores, they used Honor as a second Huawei. A channel to sell basically the same devices slightly later and at a lower price point to a different market. Young millennials and students who tended to shop online. I'm not exaggerating, literally the same devices. Honor phones were powered by Huawei's Kirin chips. They ran a software called Magic UI, which was effectively a carbon copy of Huawei's MUI. And they've often had such similar designs that I think a lot of people out there didn't even realize that these were in fact two separate companies. However, over the last two years, the distinction between them has all of a sudden become very important. Because, as you might know, in 2019, Huawei, and therefore also its sub-brands like Honor, were banned from using Google services or getting any parts from US companies. And this move single-handedly killed Huawei's global ambitions. That sudden inability to access the App Store, which is primarily what makes smartphones smart, combined with not being able to have the latest technologies because you can't work with other companies, plus the drop in trust that naturally comes when you are banned from something, means that Huawei's smartphone sales have plummeted. And as a company, they've now had to pivot their entire strategy into focusing less on the phones and much more on the products and services that surround them. But because of Honor, this US ban doesn't seem to have had the intended effect. See, all this havoc it's created left Huawei in a dilemma. They could either hold on to Honor, meaning that it would stay banned too, and its global reach would sink alongside Huawei's, or they could sell them off to another company, which would mean that Honor would no longer be owned by Huawei, and thus it could spread its wings and fly again without restriction. Eventually, at the end of last year, they decided on the latter. Huawei issued an almost touching statement that talked about all the pressures they've been under recently and how they're finally publicly declaring that they are in fact selling their sub-brand. And the whole thing finishes with, we hope this new Honor company will embark on a new road of Honor with its shareholders, partners, and employees. We look forward to seeing Honor continue to create value for consumers and build a new intelligent world for young people. It was like a parent saying goodbye to their child for the last time. But sure enough, as planned, it has freed Honor. And all new Honor phones now come with full access to the Play Store. Except, here's what I'm finding a little strange. Honor and Huawei are now separate companies, right? They've been apart for a full year, and yet, look at these two phones. This is the Honor 50. It has a 6.57 inch OLED screen and a Snapdragon 778G chipset. It's just 7.8 millimeters thick and manages to pack in a 4,300 milliamp hour battery. Okay, what about the Huawei? 6.57 inch OLED screen, Snapdragon 778G, 7.8 millimeters, 4,300 milliamp hour battery. Finish aside, from every single angle, these two phones look the same. Identical button layouts, identical speaker positioning, identical camera placements. They are the same weight to the exact gram. Courage. But there are other phones. The Honor 50 Lite is basically a Huawei Nova 8i. The Honor Magic X Foldable looks like the Huawei Mate X2 Foldable. The list goes on. And it's not just hardware. These two phones right here are apparently running two completely different operating systems. The Honor is running Android 11. The Huawei is running the company's own in-house, completely new Harmony OS. But then, 
why does everything look so familiar? Check this out. Every single icon on the Honor literally looks like it's just taken a Huawei icon and made one tiny tweak to it. The only difference I can see in the camera is that the zoom toggle on Honor has been pushed to the side. It feels like the textbook definition of, yes, feel free to copy, but just make sure you change it up a bit so no one notices. And also, the core technologies are the same. Look at these two charging bricks. One is apparently using Honor's supercharged technology, one is apparently using Huawei's supercharged technology. But I'd be willing to place quite a significant wager on the fact that these two bricks are identical. That they're manufactured in the exact same location, with the exact same components, and the same technologies behind them. The two companies, they even share staff members. At the point where Honor was cut off from Huawei, they took 8,000 employees from that company. So even though they may now have separated management teams, they are largely functioning with the same people. You're probably starting to get the idea. Huawei's been banned, Honor has separated to allow themselves to be unbanned, but even a year later, you're still effectively just getting a reskinned version of the same phone from both companies. I did reach out to a Huawei executive to try and clear this up, and she said, the design process for a phone is lengthy, and this one started before the companies went their separate ways. So according to her, these designs were finalized over a year ago, and that's why they look so similar. It seems like a long time, but maybe this is true. What makes this stranger, though, is that both of these phones were announced days apart from each other. The only hardware difference is that the Huawei has a slightly better main camera sensor, and yet the Huawei costs 499 euros, the Honor costs 529 euros. So it's almost like these two companies have switched places. Instead of being the lower tier sub-brand, Honor has kind of become the premium brand, effectively just flexing the fact that they now have Google Play services again. This Honor 50 came out before the Huawei Nova 9, which is the opposite of how they used to release later than their Huawei counterparts. Honor is serving more countries globally, and they're now branching out into not just budget phones, but also top tier flagship phones, like the Honor Magic 3 Pro Plus. Honor is trying to be the new Huawei, and Milo wants to be the CEO. Ow, 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 ow. Not a man of honor. <laughs> and if you are enjoying this video, then a sub to the channel would be honorable. However, the unfortunate consequence of this whole situation is that actually they will struggle to follow through with this and that neither of these phones make sense as a result. They make a good first impression. Like, for their mid-range prices, I was pleasantly impressed by how they have the character and general feel of higher-end devices. But using both of them feels lacking for different reasons. See, before the US ban, there is a reason that Huawei was steamrolling the smartphone market. This is a giant tech company who was not afraid to invest literally billions into R&D every year, making sure that every new generation of phones introduced at least two or three features that were significantly ahead of the others. And they had the budget to make sure that these features were tested properly and were reliable. Huawei pushed the entire industry forward. But literally the minute this ban came into effect, Huawei was completely cut off from its US suppliers. And so that innovation instantly halted. Their latest P50 Pro smartphone is actually the first time in years that they haven't been able to upgrade their main camera sensor. They weren't able to implement 5G. And at the same time, this lack of Google services like the Play Store and Gmail and Maps has made these phones all but redundant for a Western audience. So this Nova phone, it does feel quite smooth and polished, but I just can't recommend it. And then you've got Honor, who has a different problem. That while cutting ties with Huawei has unburdened them from regulation, it's also meant that they've lost their biggest asset. Like, think about it. As an apparently independent brand now, how on earth is Honor going to do the job of a company that has literally 200,000 employees, huge research and development centers, and a literal city of their own with just a merry band of 10,000 people? They can't. And you can feel this when using these phones. Exact same hardware as the Huawei, exact same cameras in this bottom ring here, and yet the Honor performs consistently worse. Check this out on the home screen, super smooth scrolling. But the second we enter the Play Store, boom, it just starts lagging. Or here in the settings, my scrolling is nice and buttery, and then the second I open this menu, there's a disconnect. Like, what? 
and, and this camera system, it's a 108 megapixel quad camera, but it's really not good. And I wasn't expecting to say that. The cameras on Huawei phones, and by implication also Honor phones, have tended to be historically some of the phone's highlights. But something feels off here. And I guess it becomes more clear when we compare the two phones' ultra-wide cameras. They should be the same, but I prefer Huawei's image processing about 95% of the time. The difference in selfies is enormous, even though both are using the same 32 megapixel sensor. And my best guess as to why is that Huawei might have retained certain patents or certain image processing algorithms that because Honor is now separated from them, they can no longer access. Or maybe Huawei just didn't share their recent software improvements with Honor in the first place, knowing that they were going to sell the company. Whatever it is, something feels missing here. This Honor is not producing 2021 quality photos. As a prospect, it might initially appear just like a Huawei phone, as if nothing ever went wrong. You have a Google search bar on the homepage, a folder for Google Apps, you swipe up from the left, you get Google Assistant. But behind the scenes, it is not quite there. The point I'm getting to is this. In its current state, this whole US ban no longer makes sense to me. Even as an independent company, Honor is still effectively acting like an extension of Huawei, like they've done right from the beginning, with a lot of the same workforce, the same manufacturing, the same technologies, except for some reason with the current rules, one of these companies is banned, the other isn't. Now, I'm not saying that I think Honor should be banned, it's not really my place to say, but what I am saying is that I can't see why Huawei is banned if Honor isn't banned. And likewise, it doesn't make sense to me that given that Honor isn't banned, why Huawei is banned. It's got to be both or neither, right? Like, if the entire premise of the US ban was that Huawei was spying, then as it is right now, it's not preventing that. The only thing it's done is made Huawei have to jump through a weird loophole that's made the new Huawei's products, aka non-Google Huawei and independent Honor, worse for consumers, because the team has been broken up and effectively forced to start from the beginning in a lot of ways. You've got to remember that if Honor is going to truly try and differentiate themselves, which they might have to because of growing pressure, then they're going to need to find new offices. They're going to need to build new research centers. They're going to need to find tens of thousands of new employees and then spend time coming up with their own new brand identity and their own unique software skin. I have no idea how they're going to be able to do that and then find a way to make themselves price competitive against bargain basement brands like Poco and Realme. Very curious to see what comes next though. I think Honor's next move will be quite indicative as to how this is gonna play out. Your location, your operating system, every hardware detail of the device you're on right now, as well as all your past browsing history. These are things that you'd wanna to keep to yourself, right? Well, this is how much information a website immediately knows about you the second you click on it. And to be honest, if it's a website you trust, then it's fine. But I'm willing to bet that there's a lot you visit that you probably don't. And that's where Surfshark VPN comes in. As far as I've seen, it's the most affordable way to keep yourself anonymous. It's just over $2 a month for as many people and as many devices as you want. But there's another perk. Because I can effectively pick the location that I want my device to be from, I can, for example, pick the United States and watch US TV shows. You can effectively have the exclusives for every single region without leaving your home. Like if I wanted to watch Batman The Dark Knight, I just switch to Canada and I can do that. So check the link in the description, and if you use the code BOSS, you get an 83% discount and an extra three months for free. To find out if the new Google Pixel 6 camera is any good, click here. Or to see, on a slightly darker note, why I'm worried about the future of humanity, that video is here. My name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss. I'll catch you in the next one.